It's much harder in, a, in an NPO to, uh, to determine what your objective is. You know, really, frankly, it's quite easy in a public listed company because, as I said, that's why people invested in them, to get a good return. Um, I've been involved in a few not-for-profit organisations where uh, Argenti's worked very well. In recent times, uh, John Argenti's brought out a, uh, an NPO version of the plan and ERACI, the Australian Research Alliance for Children and Youth, picked that up last year. Uh, ERACI is an organisation now chaired by Fiona Stanley, <coughs> excuse me, was previously chaired by me with Fiona as CEO at one stage. And they've uh, picked up the system and, and uh, have got a lot out of it. And I was talking to Lance Emerson, who's the CEO there now recently, and he was uh, very high in his praise about what they've got. The, the case I wanted to talk about in a little more length is at John 23rd College. Um, I was chairing the council um, some years ago and at the time the, the school was going through some internal sort of ructions, what actually a lot of schools go through and that is activism by parents who uh, for one reason or another were dissatisfied with some aspect of it. <coughs> and I suggested we have a look at introducing the Argenti plan and, and we did so and the principal became the chairman of the planning committee. Um, a few of his executive team were members of the planning committee and, and one or two of us on the council uh, were also there. The first stage of the plan, that is setting the objective, proved to be an absolutely seminal experience, I think, for the school. We went down to Eagle Bay and, and uh, we took 25 people down for the weekend. And um, people had said to me before, I said to them, the purpose of this weekend is to determine the objective of the school. People said to me, good luck. Um, you know, we have a quite different view about the objective to those blokes over there and those people over there and so on. And I said to them, Argenti says the objective has to be um, concise, it has to be cast in concrete, and it has to be measurable. And I said, well, uh, you know, I, I think it's a, a high hope. We had the most fabulous weekend. We, we sat there for two days and we did breakout groups of six. And so we'd sit around and talk about what we were trying to do as an organisation. At the end of the weekend, uh, we came up with an objective which everybody was delighted with and which now, and I think it's now 10 years later, uh, sits in, the, in every classroom on a black brass plaque and is on the top of the stationery of the school. And that objective uh, is as follows. Um, it, it's got a preamble in the spirit of Mary Ward and Ignatius Loyola and John 23rd, who are the founders of Loretto, uh, Jesuits and, and the Pope. Our college seeks to develop people of competence, conscience and compassion who are committed to God and the service of others. And we define competence as academic competence, social competence, emotional competence, because we said we want to develop people that are more than just well educated in the academic sense, but are well balanced, have high self-esteem, care about serving others and so on. And, and that experience itself was a very unifying one, that people said, gee, we actually all are on the same page here, we all have the same ambitions for our children. The problem was that uh, if you read the Argenti manuals, he says, you should only have one or two measures of your objective. So I rang John in Surrey and I said to him, uh, you know, I've, I've read the manuals and it says this and so on, but we're going to have more than that. And he said, oh, you really only need, you know, one or two. You should have something about, it should be something about the unemployment rate or the salary of the kids ten, five years later or something. And I said to him, well, what if they're all highly paid and suicidal? Um, <laughs> and so he said to me, well, what's your objective? What's your objective? And I read it to him. And there was a bit of a silence and he said, my God, you know, no one over here in the UK is thinking about that sort of thing. They're all mad about league tables in their, their schools and so on. So if you feel disheartened about it, don't worry, carry on because you're on the leading edge. So it was really <laughs> encouraging stuff. And I said to him, but, you know, we're having a bit of trouble. How are we going to measure these things? And he said, well, look, and this was a real breakthrough. He said, don't worry about that, just put the measurement exercise aside and go through the rest of the plan and come back to it later on. I didn't think you could actually do that because I didn't think you could measure uh, or you could assess a weakness until you determined whether you actually had it 
quantitatively, if you like. But he said, don't worry about it, do it. We did that and we had breakout weekends down at Eagle Bay or in the, in the college. Uh, we expanded the planning group and contracted it, took it to the teachers in their in-service days and so that everyone felt involved. And um, interestingly, at the first time we did SWOT analysis, the one weakness, and we had these breakout groups, and they all came back with exactly the same weakness, which we wrote down as the top of the weaknesses, divisive undermining activities by some members of the school community, for which read parents. <laughs> and so we carried on. Um, and at the end of it all, we said, well, we have to now go through the measurement exercise. In case I forget to tell you, as we did this plan then the next year and the next year and revised it, the second year people sat around and said, gee, look at this weakness up the top, that's not really all that serious, but maybe there's a bit of it, we'll put it down here. And in the third year they said, there's no such weakness in the school, that's, you know, why did we have that? Gosh, I'd forgotten about that. And that really was due to the process itself. It was a really, I think, enriching process and a, and a team building process. Um, the measurement exercise, uh, in conclusion, was the most rewarding thing of all. We went off to the Australian Council for Educational Research in Melbourne, where Jeff Masters, who's now the director, is a measurement guru. And with him and Margaret Forster, uh, developed a, me a, a measuring instrument over what must have been another year to measure social competence, emotional competence, um, compassion, um, sense of justice and so on, and commitment to God. And you can now, um, when you run this through the school, and the school has done it for must be 10 years, and so you've had, and, and by the way, it's, it's done by year eight, year 12, five years out and 10 years out, so that after five years you see what's happened to the year eights, whether they've developed on those dimensions. Um, and you can now then compare the outcome of your school with the Australian sample as more schools are involved in it. Um, it, it became a really, as I say, a rewarding experience. And um, it all goes back to the fact that the, the system, the Argeni system has quite strict rules that, you know, if you've got an objective, it has to be measurable. How are you going to measure it? Let's not kid ourselves uh, that we're turning out kids who have a sense of justice and so on. Let's see if we can determine it. Um, and so, uh, for me, the uh, application of the system in a not-for-profit organisation was actually more rewarding, perhaps, than it was in a, uh, a listed company.